What's going on tech team? It is the Tactical Doctor here and today we're going to do a review on some night vision irises. Stay tuned. Hey guys, before we begin the video, I wanted to take a moment and thank this channel's biggest supporter, Covert Tactical. I will leave a link down in the description, but coverttactical.net, they have, from what I've seen, the best deals on optics and firearms, uh, and they always hook me up. So go to coverttactical.net, reach out to Gavin, uh, emails on the website and whatnot, reach out to Gavin and get squared away with a good deal. Tell him the tech doc sent you, uh, and you guys will be good to go, trust me. All right, so today's video is on the night vision irises. Um, and really what they are is kind of uh, an addition to your own night vision. You can buy it, but these are the DIY, two DIY night vision irises. Uh, their function allows you to adjust the amount of light that your night vision sees. So I can either open it uh, and see all the light that I would see normally, or close it and it would minimize the amount of light let into my iris. What is that good for? So I found it useful for two things, or two things that apply to me at least. Uh, the first one is when I'm shooting in different lighting terrains. I guess. Uh, different ambient lightings. So it makes it so that I don't have to necessarily adjust from, uh, you know, looking through one nod and flipping them up or flipping them out of the way or, you know, flipping one out of the way. I can really just kind of, if I'm going and it is, if it is dark, I can just bam, open it up all the way and I see perfectly. And if I'm getting into a little brighter situation, I can adjust as much as I need. Um, so I found it useful for that. Here I'm just looking through one of the pods and adjusting the iris I am constricting and we can see the back of this little energizer battery box come into focus uh, and then I dilate and it blurs out again. Another thing I found it useful for is situations like hiking or really anything that requires me to kind of focus up close. It's happened once while I've been shooting as well, where I needed to read something on the back of my IR device. Uh, I didn't need to remove my nods or anything to read it. I, I could figure it out. So when you get nods and you throw them on, um, generally the first thing you're going to do is focus. You're going to focus on something usually way off in the distance. Um, I like to focus on like a star or something. Um, you adjust the coarse focus, get it as focused as you can, and then adjust the fine focus and focus it a little bit more. And that's great and all because you're focused and you can see your target or you can see whatever you happen to be looking at. But as soon as things start to come closer, uh, they get blurry and they get out of focus and you can't ID things uh, nearly as well. And so when you change the iris, when the more you close the iris, the more everything is in focus. It's actually really interesting. I can put the iris on, close it, and read this paper down in front of me or something on my gun, like whatever I need to be reading, and then also see a target, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 yards away, whatever it happens to be. It would just be a little bit more dim, that's all. So uh, I use it like when, when hiking. Um, it, when hiking in a low light situation, iris is open, I see like the beautiful sky and the, the landscape and skyline and all that great stuff. But when I'm crossing through uneven terrain, if I'm going uphill or downhill or going through a forest or anything like that, um, I like the irises closed so I know what I'm stepping on. I don't have to, you know, remove a one night vision uh, device or anything like that. I can keep them both on and just keep going, really. So that's my function for nuts, for irises. Uh, realistically, the most important thing that these allow me to do and the most important thing that it's going to allow most of you guys to do, to be fair, is uh, 
it lets me pitch my chicken tenders um, most optimally. So I don't have to like turn the kitchen light on and risk waking up the family. I can keep the light off and I've always picked the most crispy chicken tenders because they're always in focus. That's really my main use for these. I'm joking. Okay, so that's what I use them for. Uh, and that's fine and dandy, but let me show you guys how I use them. So, okay. So um, basically first thing you do is put the helmet on or whatever you're using to carry your nods. Drop the nods, get them to where you wanna be. Uh, and then this is kind of the first difference that we will get more into depth into momentarily, but you take off the caps, whatever the caps may be, and you can adjust them. Pretty simple. So I can adjust one or both. Uh, I can do you know either one with, with one hand. So when I'm shooting, I can just kind of adjust here, adjust there, and good to go. Uh, and when I'm hiking, both my hands are obviously free, so I can do that without a problem. Um, that's predominantly how I use them. Um, I'm pretty sure it's basically how everybody uses them. So as you saw there, there's a difference in the caps and a difference in how you actuate them. So let's kind of get into that. Full disclosure, um, the Butler Creek I self-made, um, I think entirely off of Amazon. Um, bought it myself, assembled it myself. Um, you can see it's actually not as clean as it probably would be otherwise. Um, this iris here was created by Alpha One Designs, um, and I will leave a link to their Instagram down below. Um, they created it for me uh, and sent it to me. Um, they sourced all the parts and, and assembled it. If you guys want a how-to or a parts list on this iris, uh, reach out to Alpha One Designs. Um, they will definitely help you out. Again, I'll leave that Instagram down below. Um, but he's a genius and a perfectionist, which is why there's none of this stuff on, uh, on this iris. Okay, now let's talk about some of the similarities and differences. So as for similarities, um, they do the same job, basically. And that's where the similarities end. After that, almost everything is different. First things first, the caps. The Butler Creek cap, as you can see, just kind of pops off here. Um, super convenient, hit the button and it stays there and that's it. It's not gonna go anywhere, it's not gonna flip back down. You're not gonna lose it, it's there. Awesome design. The Alpha One Designs cap initially started with uh, just a string that you would tie to the cap itself and then to your night vision and it would just kind of hang there. Uh, off to the side or kind of just hang down low however you had it set up. I threw some Velcro on the cap of the Elf One design and now I can just kind of throw it on my helmet and it sticks there and hopefully isn't going to move. I don't know if it's a you know a Velcro issue or my helmet issue but it's not always sticking perfectly so you know that's noted. Sometimes I do have to if I hear it fall and I can pick it up and that's great but um, slightly inconvenient. So on that one, I would say Butler Creek wins. Next thing we encounter is the glass, the protective glass uh, in the iris. That's uh, a sacrificial lens, really. Uh, what I've noticed is that the glass that is used by Alpha One Designs when he uh, created this was a lot better than the glass that I had used uh, to create my Butler Creek. That could just be a me thing. I like I bought everything off of Amazon. Um, so maybe I could have used better glass, but again, that would have probably made the whole unit cost more. And so after the glass, we then encounter the actual iris. So it's actuated differently on both irises. On the Butler Creek model, you use this knob here. Um, one way is constriction and the other way is um, is dilation, it kind of depends on how you orient it when you build it. Um, and that knob can move based on how your gross focus knob is, or gross focus is adjusted with the objective lens. The actuation of the uh, Alpha One designs is just kind of moving this little part here. Um, one way constricts it, the other way dilates it. We can see almost right off the bat that the diameter of the completely opened irises is larger on the Alpha One designs. 
uh, there is a larger diameter as opposed to on the Butler Creed. Um, this translates to the amount of light let in. I personally have not noticed a difference. However, a lot of people that have created the Butler Creek model on their own state that they do notice edge dimming and edge blurring. Uh, so their full FOV just kind of around the edge there uh, is, is blurred for them. Those that do have the Alpha 1 designs do say that they hadn't experienced that. Personally, I haven't experienced it with either, um, but that's just my one case. I had seen uh, numerous accounts of the edge blurring in the Butler Creek. On the other end of that whole diameter spiel, um, as we kind of constrict, we see that the Alpha 1 Designs is also a more narrow constriction. What this means to me is that I can go into a higher light situation room um, and not have to worry at all about damaging my pod. I, I'll be able to keep the night vision on my head without having to ruin it uh, or move it. Um, I can also go from a very high light room to a low light room and back into a very high light room with, with no issues um, on that front. We can see the Butler Creek at maximal constriction on the left and the Alpha One designs at maximal constriction on the right with the brightness differences. To continue with the actuation on the Butler Creek, we have this knob as I kind of discussed. Now, when you are hopping over obstacles or in and out of cars and whatnot, sometimes gravity can kind of bump this uh, and open it just a little bit as you're, you know, jumping up and down. You're just kind of slowly opening that. And it's not really that big a deal. Uh, you're not going to completely open it. It's just somewhat noticeably different from when you started the obstacle or, uh, or when you started your shooting day. That is not something you're going to experience or not something that I've experienced yet with the Alpha 1 design. The Alpha 1 design has been really reliable in the sense that once I set it to a certain diameter, that is where it's going to stay. It's not going to move from there. It's going to be right there at the start of my training day and right there at the end of my training day. Uh, start of my hike, end of my hike, it's, it's not moving. So it's solid in that aspect. Okay, below that we have the mounting solutions. So the Butler Creek, uh, you just kind of pop on and pop off. Uh, it's just a piece of rubber really, or plastic that you pop on and pop off. Some people, um, myself included, have had to use uh, black electrical tape to kind of get a secure fit um, onto the uh, objective lens. Um, not really that big of a deal, uh, it just pops on, pops off. Um, the Alpha 1 design version uh, screws on and screws off. So this screws into your objective lens, um, screws right off so we can see screws right into there. Um, and this is a much more secure fit. I can put this on and I don't have to worry about it. It's not going to get caught on anything. It's not gonna pop off because somebody grabbed it or anything of that sort. It's it's there to stay. Okay, so now that we've kind of talked about some of the similarities and differences between the two, um, I'd have to say that the Butler Creek is good. The Butler Creek for its price point at about 60-ish dollars is wonderful. I mean, it does do what I wanted it to do. It's great um, for that. Um, it does fall short uh, in a few areas and where it falls short, the uh, Alpha, uh, Alpha One Designs really picks up and really shines there. The price difference, the Alpha One Designs being roughly 120, like I said, um, may be off-putting to some. To me, at this point, I found that the pros of the Alpha One Designs Iris greatly outweigh the price of six, the price difference of sixty dollars um, that you would get with the Butler Creek. The glass is better, it's easier to actuate, it's a more reliable actuation. It does fall short with the cap. Um, and like I said, I'll reach out to Alpha One Designs and see how he feels about that. Um, but I mean, whatever, you throw some Velcro on it, throw it on your helmet and you're good to go. Or just use the string that they send in. It's a little dangly then, but it's okay. 
that's really the only place it falls short. I would like something that clicks open, but it's okay. We can't win them all. Uh, overall, for $120, I think this is definitely worth it. I will soon be switching out the Butler Creek for the Alpha One Designs method. Um, but I am curious as to what your thoughts are. Uh, if you guys have one or both of these, please reach out and let me know. Uh, maybe I did the Butler Creek wrong. Honestly, I'm not the most precise person in the world. Alpha One is, that's kind of why they're so good, in my opinion. Um, so Alpha One, if you're watching this, thanks. I appreciate uh, the effort that you put into this, uh, into this iris and ironically have shown me the light. Uh, weird. Thanks, guys. That's all I have for you on this video. All right, guys, really quickly before we finish, um, I want to talk about bullet wounds. So last week, we kind of spoke about tourniquet use, and I had gotten some feedback, and it stated that sometimes in the field, people like to put tourniquets much higher. Um, yeah, sure, go for it. Um, if that's what you have been taught in the past in the field, um, and that works for you, and has worked for your team and, and your teachers in the past, by all means, go ahead and do it. I am not the end all be all of medical knowledge. Um, I'm just sharing my experiences. That being said, let's talk about some more bullet wounds. So let's talk about a penetrating trauma to say the abdomen or the leg or something. What a lot of people do uh, when somebody gets shot anywhere realistically is they apply pressure because that's what they see in the movies and Really, that's what you should be doing. You should be applying pressure to the wound. However, um, it's also important to not only apply pressure to the entrance wound, but take a look for an exit wound. Applying pressure to an entrance wound doesn't necessarily mean anything if they're bleeding out through an exit wound. So you can, you know, clamp whatever you're doing or you can figure out a thousand ways to apply pressure to an exit wound, but please look because you will have somebody bleeding out in front of you that could have been saved simply because you didn't turn them over and, and look for an exit wound. That's all I have for you guys today. Go out, get some training, apply some knowledge, and I will catch you guys next time.